Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. Welcome to this week's edition of Monday Moments, which as you can see is a pre-recorded version. In a minute, we're gonna be talking a little bit about dowsing rods, using dowsing rods for spirit communication, how really it is absolutely fundamental to the work that we do as house healers. And that's what we talk about here on this channel. It's all about your intuition and working with intuition, the subjective nature of reality and using that association with your subjective nature, your intuition to really pull wellness into your life, to, to enable well-being to come to your life more frequently and more abundantly. And we do that through using things like dowsing, mindfulness and meditation. And of course, the power of positive focused intent. That really is a thing. And if it's the sort of thing that you're interested in, click on the subscribe click on the grey bell icon to get notified every time we do an upload, which at the moment is about twice weekly. Okay, so coming up, I wanna talk about using dowsing rods for spirit communication. Just a few words of warning and what, you know, what I've learned from my own communication with spirits, either through the house healing or before I even got into this professionally, when I was living with a spirit in our house some years ago. So that's all coming up. The first thing is really to think about spirit and communicating with spirit. You know, some people think, oh yeah, I really want to do that because it sounds exciting, it sounds interesting. And we see this stuff on TV that kind of glamorizes it. Um, a, it's not glamorous. Um, and B, it's not a game. That's the fundamental one thing that I really wanted to say. I encourage you to to look at it if you feel inclined to do so, but look at it with some uh, respect. We can be fairly light once we have a relationship with a guardian energy, a guardian spirit, for example. We can be quite lighthearted, they accept that, and there's a lot of humor in the universe, we must never forget that. But equally, this is not something to be mucked about with. People, some uh, I've had a couple of people ask me about Ouija boards. What do I think about using Ouija boards? Well. Ouija balls per se, I've never tried. I'm not interested in trying. I did, as recounted once in a previous video, I did once set up a, 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 a like a dowsing board with the alphabet and I held the dowsing rod uh, solidly on the table and I asked my guardian spirit uh, of the house, her name, and that spelt J-A-N-E straight away. Uh, really powerful stuff. Now, if that kind of energy comes through into a Ouija board, if you believe in spirits and you're doing it for a bit of a laugh, then that kind of energy, that kind of action is going to really freak you out, the chances are. If it doesn't, then okay, you're open to spirit at that point, but sitting in a group with friends uh, where you probably haven't had a lot of training in spirit work, then you're basically opening yourself up and say, so sending up a flare and saying, hello, I'm here, and all sorts of stuff can, can come in. So that's not a great idea. And uh, thirdly, you know, even if you don't believe in uh, spirits as such, and you don't actually make contact with spirit, as you sit in this, this uh, position with other people, you are opening up your auric field anyway. Um, and even if you don't get hit by a passing mischievous spirit, then you may just be picking up other people's emotional rubbish. And that sometimes does not sit very happily with you. So those are words of warning. I suggest, unless you really know what you're doing um, and you're completely comfortable and you use the Ouija board actually with some respect, then don't use it. That's, that would be my advice, okay? What is spirit? This is the really interesting thing for me. What is it? Because we th tend to think it's like, well, these spirits are around, they're just us in another form. And yes, they are. But step back again from that and ask the question, what is life? What is awareness? Because these are things that are really, really relevant and really the really big question. What makes us aware? What gives us this experience? You know, these, these questions are at the fundamental basis of all interaction with spirit because it affects how we consider spirit, what do we consider spirit to be? You know, uh, on a most simple level, I consider that I have a spirit in me, and that is me, my true me. This is just a body. 
the you know the container for that spirit so our life therefore is simply an awareness a presence a point in time in this dimension and that's relevant because in one of the conversations that I had with Jane, the spirit of our house, she was trying to help me understand this idea that you know, we understand that everything that we experience here is built from the quantum field, the zero point field, right? Everything is, is built at that atomic level. Everything in our world, in our dimension comes out of that. But she was saying that the same thing applies in hers. It's a different vibration of that same zero point field, a different aspect of that dimension. And actually that dimension, that zero point field is a field of potential. It's a field of ultimate potential. It's infinitely variable. It will provide whatever we expect and truly believe and is appropriate in line with the management that is brought forth into manifested realms, right? Into the physical dimension. And what she's saying is that spirit exists everywhere. Spirit is everywhere. And now, of course, I say that about earth energy and the reason I say that about earth energy is because we're talking about the same thing. I said just now, I consider myself to be spirit, not the physical body. When we start to douse around earth energy, we're dousing in the zero point field as far as I can work out. And the zero point field is a conscious field of awareness. It is conscious in itself for so many reasons. And when we interact with it, when we ask for a spirit to come forth, we are asking an aspect of that zero point field to form into an awareness, to form its awareness out of the, the bubbling quantum field, to become present, to exhibit its personality in the same way as we, as human beings, exhibit personality, but we do so using the physical atomic structure rather than whatever that is that spirit has. All the spiritual traditions everywhere in the world, throughout history, have always said that everything is one. And it's through the zero point field that everything is one, right? The zero point field is made up of potential, of a conscious awareness. There is an awareness to it, we know that. And so when we start to think about, well, what are people, what is spirit? It is an aspect of the zero point field, just at a different level. And we talk about, on this channel, we talk about making change, bringing well-being into our lives. We talk about house healing and through focused intent. And all we're doing when we do use focused intent is accessing the same zero point field and manipulating it. We're working with it. It is the clay that we build things with, as everybody does with their lives, some highly sensitive people do find that they are encountering spirit day to day. And obviously this is causing them some issues because they didn't invite it into their lives. Now, how is that possible, you say? Well, basically because, they're, because we all interact with the zero point field, then therefore it's, it's a permanent connection. And if we're highly sensitive, then we're more sensitive to the subtle realms around us. Um, you can be affected purely by a spirit uh, being near you, um, you can sort of start to experience emotions that you're not familiar with, or you can feel really, really sad and low. The other thing is that I have come across uh, at least one person who finds that spirits of the deceased actually use her energy um, as a sort of a portal through which to clear and to continue through onto their journey. Now, I'd not come across this, so it's only something recently that I've come across in a, in a house healing case, and it's very, very interesting. Um, and if it happens to that one person, then it happens to other people. Um, so just be wary um, and never, 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 ever uh, sort of openly um, invite a spirit into your energy field, okay? Always keep them at arm's length until you know what you're doing. And dowsing is the safest way to interact with spirit because everything is kept very much at arm's length. So what I'm trying to get at here today, we can use dowsing rods for spirit communication, but the real thing is to really think about and be mindful of 
what you perceive spirit to be. It's not a game, and the reason it's not a game is because it's so fundamental to the existence of everything. And that really is all I've been trying to say. We'll pick all this up again next week. Um, and do remember that if you're interested in this sort of stuff, do click on the subscribe, click on the grey bell icon to get notified every time we do a video upload. And do click on the like button if you've enjoyed some of what you've uh, seen and heard today. Do subscribe though, it really does help to make a difference and send the right messages to YouTube. And do uh, have a look at my website www.knightsrose.com do check that out and check out the workshops if you're in the UK and I am starting to work on the online course for geomancy the online training course for house healing I have started it's going to be a while coming yet but I have started so do please be patient if you're interested in that drop me a line about that drop me a line about anything else and I will try to answer if I can so until next time Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.